Hello, I'm Dr. Wright. Today, we will be introducing you into the wonderful world of chemistry. Today's lesson, Bonds. James Bonds. first topic is going to be ionic bonds. First I'll explain what an ionic bond is. An ionic bond is when two atoms with a negatively charged atom called an anion and a positively charged atom called a cation combine. from another atom, it gains a charge. If the atom steals electrons, it becomes a negative charged atom. When it gets electrons taken away from it, it becomes a positively charged atom. However, there is one thing important to note. A negative, an ion, with an, I an ion made from an ionic bond, Will always have a charge of zero. In ionic bonds, the ability to form ionic bonds is determined by an element's oxidation number. The oxidation number is taken from the number of valence electrons or the number of electrons in an ele element's outermost energy level. These elements, shown on the left, have positive oxidation numbers, meaning they form positive ions. Meanwhile, the elements on the other side of the table have negative oxidation numbers, meaning they form negative ions. The elements in the metal, called transition metals, have oxidation numbers that change with no set value. Ionic compounds have a neutral charge because the two ions that form the compound cancel out I'll now take you over to the lab of Dr. Ewert. He will show you a common yet violent ionic bond being formed. The ionic bond is sodium chloride. Hello, I'm Dr. Ewert, and here in this container I have captured some chlorine gas. And right here I have a little bit of sodium. I'm going to mix these two and Crikey, look at this! The dangerous elements sodium and chlorine have formed into a substance that we need in our bodies every day. Salt. There are several properties of ionic compounds that differ from covalent bonds. Let's look at a few, shall we? Ionic compounds have high melting points and thus also have high boiling points. When dissolved in a liquid, they conduct electricity, for reals. They rarely burn, ever. You ever try to burn salt? Didn't think so. They're often really hard and brittle, like... And when they form solids, they're always crystals, crystalline structure. Covalent bonds, unlike ionic bonds, are normally very soft and stretchable, much like this nine-year-old gummy candy. <laughs> also, they are very easily burned. They're not always crystalline in shape. They can hold, have very different shapes. And they generally have very low melting points and boiling points.
The main difference between covalent bonds and ion bonds is that covalent bonds are always formed with nonmetals such as nitrogen and oxygen. Bonds can often be described as kids in a kindergarten. Ionic bonds are the mean kids, they take what they want. And the covalent bonds are the nice kids who learn how to share. Covalent bonds, unlike ionic bonds, share valence electrons. Fluorine and oxygen, as shown here, have seven and six valence electrons respectively. The oxygen shares two electrons with the two fluorines and the fluorines share one electron each with the oxygen. After sharing, both the one oxygen and the two fluorines have full outer shells.